those people who came before us, who stood who showed us we stand up. Amen. Our ancestors, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, those who served uh, gallantly, amen, in the military, and who was taken away as a result of And those who came back and still had trauma and still dealing with situations. Fighting for within themselves. Lord, we thank you for this day and we memorialize and we honor all those that I've mentioned. Today we have an opportunity again to be an honor. Free. Man, live in a country where you can be free 
and even when we memor rememorize what Jesus Christ himself did, that you can be free. Amen. You know, it's, it's a time of looking back, but it's also a time of celebrating and being thankful for the sacrifices that has been made. You know, sometimes we take sacrifice for granted. You know, and, and I think it's time that we start to appreciate those that gave their lives that you can be free. You know, we got to learn to appreciate things. And if it wasn't for those that gave their lives, you wouldn't have a good education opportunity right now. That's right. And there was those that gave their lives that this country uh, is not a communist country that you can have an opinion. You know, we, we ought to be thankful that you can have an opinion. Because a lot of us would be dead because we would have shared our opinion right. and they would have killed us. Right. You, you know, see, see, we don't realize what we have, you know, because we're too busy um, complaining about what we don't have. Right. You know, so we got to learn to be grateful. You know, I look at other countries and and, and, and in China, if you had a, a baby and if it wasn't the right sex, they killed that child. And, uh -huh. You know, and so so you got you got to learn to be grateful. And 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 and, and in Cuba, you're not even allowed to tell, tell people how you feel or your opinion. Or you dead, and, and they can walk in your house and rape your wife, and you can't say nothing because you can't defend yourself. Now see, the, you may is looking at that and say, I wish you would try to come up with mine because you have the right to defend yourself. Right. They, they, they come in yours trying to do that they walk out in the body bag. Come on, let's keep it real, amen? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so, so but, but you have that freedom and there's some people that died that allowed you to have that freedom. That's right. You know, so we got to be thankful. But I'm going to share a word with you. I don't know if you're going to be thankful. But, uh, but I'm going to share one that, that, that God, when I was in my prayer room, he, he gave and I, I gave it to my church on yesterday and I said, I, I got to give this to you guys because this, this message here made us really, really think about some things that, that God, God is trying to speak to his church. And the problem that, 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 that God had with us is we're not listening. I really believe that we as the church have a spiritual caller ID and that when God is calling, we act like we ain't home. Okay. I really believe that we, we know God is calling and we know there's some things that God is requiring of us and we know there's some things God wants us to do, but we don't want to answer that phone call. Okay. So he decided to send a messenger. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Hello. Hello. So this morning, y'all, we're going to talk about this morning, God's righteousness versus our righteousness. See, y'all, I heard that ooh all the way over here now. Because that's something that we got to talk about. And, 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 and I don't know where people get it, that we think the Bible was designed for sinners. And that the rules of the Bible applies to sinners. See, it doesn't apply to a sinner until the sinner accepts Christ. That's right. Amen. So the Bible applies to us believers, and, and those messages of destruction is not for sinners. Those messages of destruction is for the believers. Mm. Mm. Come on now. And, 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 and see, most of us, we was lied to when you first got saved. Because some of us come out of a place that says, once saved, always saved. That's a lie. That's a bald face lie. Uh -huh. Because it's not once saved, always saved. That's why Moses had to tell God, he said, do not take my name out of the, uh, out of the book of life. Mm -hmm. So if Moses had to say that, <laughs> what <well>, man? <laughs> If Moses had enough sense to realize, okay, y'all, I messed up, but don't take my name yes, sir. out of the book of life. My Lord. That means you can do something to black your name out yes, sir. out of the book of life. So it's not one saved, always saved. <laughs> so, so, so what we have to do is, you know, some says you're not saved unless you, unless you baptize in Jesus' name. 
Yeah. Some say if women is not saved if she wear if she wear pants. Y'all, y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep telling the truth. <laughs> so, 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 in the process of this, what, what happened is we have created our righteousness. First of all, let's go to Matthew 6. <laughs> I'm going to get word on this. Uh -huh, I think y'all better sit down on this because I'm going to be reading some scriptures. So if you don't want to stand, you ain't got to stand. Okay. I just want y'all to know that we're going we gonna to walk this thing. Because when I leave here today, I guarantee you, you ain't going to say a good message. I guarantee you, you're going to think about your walk. My God. Hello, somebody. Okay. Because we got to stop having good messages. We gotta stop coming to church and having a good time like you was at the club. Oh. See, when I wanted to have a good time, I went to the High Chaparral. Oh. I went to CC Havana. Okay. When I wanted to have a good time, I came into the house of God because I wanted to live. Okay, so Come on, now. Say, Come on. say it. Come on. See, I don't go to the hospital when I'm feeling good. Right, right. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hello, somebody. See, I don't need to. See, that's why the doctors say an annual checkup. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday should be an annual checkup. Uh -huh. That you're checking yourself to make sure you're right. Yeah. But not right in your eyes, but right in God's eyes. Okay. Amen. Matthew 6 33 says this But seek, aim at, and strive after. I'm reading out of Amplified for those. So y'all don't know. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. I want you to listen to that carefully. His way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. If you're going to have the righteousness of God, that means you're doing, the, you're doing things his way. Not our way. All right? See, we all got a way in this room that we claim is right. But it's not the righteousness of God. Amen. See, what we end up doing is we, we, have a, we have a sense. And then some of us, to our own righteousness, we say, this is just the way I am. Look out. Look out. God understands me. This is, God knows my heart. And yes, his, he knows your heart. And he says, with your mouth you say you love me, but your heart is far from me. And the reason your heart is far from him is because of the way you act. Y'all with me? Okay, so, and we still do it. Bucks don't want, they don't swept Miami, so y'all should be having a little happiness on you. So, 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 but, but now we got to deal with us. And, and, and so, so, so here's the here's the thing God says. God said, "Listen, what I need you to do is, is is seek my righteousness, my way of doing and being right." Every last one of us come from a different denomination, so each denomination has its own way of being right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. To the fact that when we got tired of being in in, in, in a certain denomination of righteousness, we call ourselves non-denominational and we created our own righteousness. Watch out now. People say, what are you? Not that I'm with this. I said, no, I'm kingdom. <laughs> they said, what do you mean by that? I said, I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, and I follow my king. I don't follow a denomination. I follow my king, and whatever my king says, is that's it. Each denomination has a democracy. That means you have everybody has an opinion. You can't follow Jesus with an opinion. My God. <laughs> See, our problem is we all got an opinion. See, I, I used to hear Church of God Christ said that they're going to heaven because they're holy. And Baptists didn't used to call themselves holy. Uh -huh. Baptists used to call Pentecostal folk holy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Them holy rollers. Because everybody had their different way. Women used to wrap their head and have a long dress on. Because that was their righteousness. 
Baptists used to put the woman and make her sit down if she got pregnant, but the man that got her pregnant is in the same church and he ain't got to sit down. See, we all got our own righteousness. So let's talk about this. Let's go over to Romans real quick. Romans chapter 10. See, our righteousness versus God's. Romans 10. Now I'm going to be reading out of both. Amplified and King James. It says this in the King James verse, Romans 10 and 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. See, we sit in church and we have a zeal for God. We, we, we desire to be with God. We desire to love God. We desire to sing God. We desire to praise God, but not according to knowledge. So, in other words, what we've been having in church for years is we've been having information, but it's been contaminated. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, we've been having contaminated information and contaminated knowledge. See, because everybody got a different knowledge. <clears throat> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> So we, we've been having contamin, uh, contaminated information. See, it was contaminated when, when they fight over baptism. Everybody fighting. Which one? Is, see, because they both got contaminated information. So, so in, in having that contaminated information, what they ended up doing is fighting over contaminated information. See, contaminated information says once saved, always saved. And, and, and brother, this ain't to you because that was contaminated information. You ain't no sinner and saved. You're either a sinner or you're saved. There's nothing in the middle. Say that, say that. And see, we was trained to say, I'm a sinner, saved by grace. No, either you are saint or a sinner. There's nothing in between. That's it. Yes, sir. Uh, Hallelujah. Because, see, if you if you tell me you're a sinner, saved by grace, then by grace then, then if you're only a sinner saved by grace, then you're reminding yourself that you're still a sinner, then you are like a straw light. They're like, come on, go off, come on, go off, come on, go off, come on, go off. But he said he brought us out of what? Darkness. Into what? So if he brought me into the light, then I'm part of the light now. I'm no, I'm no longer part of darkness. But because of our own righteousness, we use that so when we mess up deliberately, we have an excuse. Well, Come on, sir. Why? Mm. Huh. Mm. It's just like, and, and I'm not talking about them, but it's just like the 12 step. Mm -hmm. 12 step says, and, and I heard him say, you'll hit away, you'll drink away. Either you're deliberate or you're not. And we use as an excuse. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Your wife make you mad, you go get a hit, blame it on her, and say, now I'm starting over. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, y'all. We all been there. Yes, sir. You got a sponsor that ain't even stronger than you. <laughs> Jesus. See, y'all want this today, right? Come on, wait. Oh, that's, that's good. It's good work. Good. Hallelujah. I even heard a preacher say, I heard a preacher say, he says, when we go to the grocery store, I cannot go down the cleaning aisles. I send my wife down to clean the cleaning aisles. I can't go down to clean the cleaning aisles. And I'm like, why this man just got up here and said he couldn't go down to clean the cleaning aisles? He said, because if he go down to clean the cleaning aisles, he's going to see those, um, what you call those scraping things that scrape the pots? Uh, the chalkboards. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. said, because if you see that, he'll relapse. Wow. I was like, you ain't delivered. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Come on. See, see, see. See, but, but because of our righteousness, we'll let you live any kind of way and let you give us those excuses. My God. So he said, watch this. They got zeal of me. They, they, they like me. They, they want me. But, but they, have, they have no knowledge. Not my knowledge. It's just like your favorite football team. You see, my favorite football team is the Pittsburgh Steelers. So when I see somebody that's still in gear, I, mean, I ask them, are you diehard? <laughs> and if they say, I had, I had a young man, he said, Yeah, I'm a diehard still a fan of self. I gotta test you then. 
How many coaches have we had since 1969? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> he was like, um, I don't know. I said, you're not Don Hall. Because we only had three. That's right. We only had three. Right. Chuck Noll, Mike Tomlin, and Bill Cowell. Right. The only three we had. Right. Say, I'm a diehard. <laughs> and I know by knowledge. Chuck Noll got hired, and the first person he dropped it was me and Joe Green. Yeah. See, and we in church. And we have, we love God, but we have, we don't have the knowledge of God. We have the knowledge of our organizations that we came out of. That's why when you was Baptist and you was taking communion, you was confessing. Every communion you confess. When I leave this place, I'm going to quickly join myself. And nine times out of ten, you don't do that. So watch this. He said, he said, watch this. He said, you have a seal of God. But not according to knowledge. Then the next verse says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, they are being ignorant of God's way of doing and being right. If you was if you had the knowledge of God's way of doing and being right, the first thing you would ever never do, ever, 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 if you had that knowledge, is to speak against your leadership. Mm. If you had that knowledge. First thing, I'm not putting my mouth on him. I pray for him and let God open his eyes, but I'm not going to put my mouth. Wow. Amen. <clears throat> so watch this. He said, but for, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish what? Their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. See, you, you, have, you have different denominations. They still don't believe in God's own women to preach. They yeah. own righteousness. Yes, sir. <laughs> if it was women there, you wouldn't be standing here. You'd go stand over there and deliver the message. Sure because they don't have the knowledge. Because the Spirit of God is neither male nor female. Amen. But we don't have that knowledge. We don't have the knowledge. We don't have the, the, the knowledge of God. We're not submitting to God, to God's way of doing and being right. There was churches in the South. They probably coming out of it. But they used to vote you in church. Mm -hmm. You stand up to join and they be like, okay, it's time to vote. Now you going to vote me into Christ. Okay. <laughs> oh. yes, sir. See, we had our own righteousness. Amen. They would vote you in. See, we so messed up that we don't understand how God do things that we sell old chicken in Colonel Sanders. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. That's our righteousness. Mm. See, we have not submitted to the righteousness of God and how God wants to do it. And we can't submit because most of us, we have been indoctrinated with contaminated information that when real information comes, we catch an attitude. Oh, say it. I know he ain't preaching like that. <laughs> how dare him? Because we don't want real information. The Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. But now let's finish it. It says because you have rejected knowledge. Knowledge came, mm -hmm. but you rejected it because you didn't want to change. Mm -hmm. But you didn't finish the, the, finish the scripture. It says now because you have rejected, I have rejected you. Oh. Wow. And not only you, but your children too. Word. See, we only give contempt, we only give pieces, and when you only give me a piece, you contaminated it. Because now you don't give me a piece that's going to fit what you want me to do. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. All right. Mm -hmm. See, I only get the piece that you want. I used to hear them all the time trying to whoop you with the scripture says, obedience is better than sacrifice. But they won't tell you why God said that. Mm -hmm. 
See, because obedience is better than sacrifice, but your obedience to, should never be to man. It should always be to God. Man. <laughs> okay, see, I, I, I got to throw a curveball right here, Bishop, because I don't think they caught that. <laughs> see, you're not being obedient or faithful to Bishop Fawcett. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Colossians says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. So however you treat Bishop, you're doing it as unto the God. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. That's the word. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, 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 and, and I gotta show you this because I gotta show you some more in here because we are, we are as believers, we are in dangerous grounds. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Because the God we serve don't play. That's right. Yeah. Right. See, that. see, I had a father that didn't play. He had six sons. And my daddy didn't play. If I saw that red. Black and red 442, I know somebody's about to get a whooping. And nine times out of ten, it was all the boys. <laughs> because my daddy didn't play. If he said go to school and don't get suspended, and you came home suspended, you might as well, you might as well know you're about to get it. He said go to school and get good grades, and you came home with bad grades, you might as well know you're about to get it. Matter of fact, you, th that was your funeral procession on the way home because you know you're about to get killed. <laughs> please, you talking about everybody was like, I ain't worried about my dad, but please, I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> and that was the longest walk home with that report card. So we're in it to God because we think we can stay in the condition that we're in and nothing happens. So let's go over to Timothy, 2 Timothy. I just want y'all to see this before we go over and uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 5 says this, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Mm. Having a form of godliness. See, see, we really don't know what God looked like because the way we act. So we can't, and I love the, his, his analogy that he said, he said when, when, when you come into a church or whatever and somebody says, I want to see Jesus, they're supposed to see Jesus in us. Mm -hmm. But they see transformers. Wow. They don't see Jesus. They see transformers. One minute you act like you love somebody, and next thing you know, you transform. And then you're looking vicious. Then you're at the grocery store, you know, now you're sitting in line complaining, and they're like, we're not going to show. Then you get to the restaurant. Do you know the worst day of the restaurant day is Sunday? Sunday. When church folks go to the restaurant, we don't tip. You got that right. <laughs> we, we don't tip and we complain all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't even like seeing you come. My God. Right. I've been in the restaurant business 35 years. We couldn't stand church folks. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and we're supposed to be seeing Christ in you? So he said, listen, they got a form of godliness, but denying the power. God is not. Watch this. And I said this to, to them yesterday. Most of us know how to put a sermon together. We was taught that. You got to have a body, an introduction, a body, and a clothes. Right? Look, and, and, and then if you came out of the Baptist, you had to have a little history. You had to tell a little history about the writer and, and, right. and, 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 and the date and the time. And, and you know, and you got to sound real good. And then you go home and you practice kicking your leg up to make everybody feel happy. And, and how you going to close it. See we, oh. see, see, we was taught all of that. Ain't no anointing in that. 
The anointing is not for entertainment. The anointing is for work. Amen. And because we didn't know that, we were like, oh, they so anointed. They was the biggest whoremonger. Mm -hmm. Oh, they anointed today. Same thing with the choir. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, so, even us choir have our own righteousness. Right. I know because I used to be in the choir. And on Saturday, we used to drink, smoke our weed. And then Sunday morning, we have we come this far by faith. <laughs> we had our own right. Come on now. That's yes, the truth. That's the truth. That's yeah. the truth, brother. <laughs> we had our own righteousness. <laughs> and in our own righteousness, what we was doing, we was lying and we was on our way, leaning on the Lord, going to hell. So he, when he said, listen, when, and when, when the Holy Ghost really took over me, I had, and I had, I still was singing in that choir, but I had to come away from them. I had to sing from the far back row. I was not up with them. People were like, what's wrong with you? I got to get away. I can't hang with you no more. I can't sit with you no more. I can't even go eat with you no more. I'm not going to eat with somebody. And I told my church, if you ain't paying your tax, I'm not driving you around. Because I'm not driving the curse around. Mm -hmm. You curse. What am I going to hang out with? I'm blessed and you curse. What am I going to hang with a curse for? Mm -hmm. Oh, they just my, that's my guy. You know your guy's a whoremonger. Why am I going to hang with you? You know your guy's still drinking. Why am I hanging with you? I'm going to hang with the sinners because my job is to go get the sinners. But those of you who came in to be with God and you still live in fire, I can't hang with you. Wow. <laughs> Matter of fact, my wife can't even hang with you. See, y'all don't like this, do y'all? <laughs> Bring it home. Because it told us to come away. Yeah, yeah. come from among them. Women don't like being called hoochies, but you're hanging out with a bunch of hoochies. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. So you get treated like the rest of them. Okay. So he says, come out from among them. Right? So now watch this. We look at our righteousness, and we look how we behave, and look how we put God's name on stuff that it don't even belong on. <laughs> how you watching stuff that, that if Jesus was next to you, you wouldn't even have it on you. I'm going to just leave it right there. <laughs> Fill in the blanks yourself. Okay. But, but here's the thing. We think we okay. We think we okay. Can I show y'all the danger part of this now? Mm -hmm. Because see, our righteousness, y'all know how it is. We, we love some people and we hate some. Right? We forgive some people and we won't forgive some. That's the truth. But at the same time, we say we belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. So let me show y'all this. Because I'm going to walk this and then I'm going to walk out. Because <laughs> y'all might jump on me, so I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> and I told y'all, be. The last time I was here, don't get mad at me. Get mad at your bishop. He brought me. <laughs> Watch this. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version so y'all can really get what God is saying here. Y'all ready for this? Sir. All right. He said this in the Amplified Version. Therefore, God sends upon them a misleading influence, a working of error, and a strong delusion to make them believe what is false. So God says this. God says, listen, I've been trying to tell y'all to change the way you live. I try to tell you to change the way you act. I've been trying to tell you to line up with my word. And live the way I wanted you to live. But because you decided not to, I'm going to send you a delusion that you think you're right. I'm going to let you stay right there. 
Because the end is destruction for you. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 11. Second testimony 2.11. He says this, I'm going to send the delusion. It ain't the devil now. I'm going to give you that delusion. I'm going to make you think you're right. I'm going to let you listen and believe the false things that you've been claiming. And guess what? The end is going to be your destruction. My God. So what am I saying? You might have the most beautiful funeral. And they're talking about how holy you was and you're burning in hell. Because God said, I'm allowing you to believe the lie. I'm allowing you to believe that the way you acting, the way you carry yourself, the way you treating people, the way you talking about people, and because you won't lie with my word, I'm going to make you think you're right, and at the end, you're going to be on fire. Okay. Woo. See, because your righteousness would never line up with God's. But I'm going to let you think you're right. I'm going to let you think you're holy. I'm going to thank you. I'm going to let you believe you're a mighty woman of God or a mighty man of God. But at the end, while they're giving you praise, you'll be burning. Okay. My God. Wow. Ooh. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm allowing you. I'm going to allow you to sit here and act like you're right. I'm allowing you to sit here and act like everything is okay. I'm going to allow you to sit here and make you think you have the right to speak against leadership. I'm going to let you sit here and make you think you have the right to voice your opinion. And then the end is going to be destruction. Amen. Even when Moses messed up, Joshua still didn't put his mouth on Moses. Come on now. Come on. He just shut up. And he followed leadership. When you come into the kingdom, it ain't about how you feel. See, the problem is we always worry about how we feel. And you ain't got no more feelings. I've been church hurt. I got a scripture for that too. <laughs> I've been church hurt. But in Mark chapter 4, it says you ain't been church hurt. It says the word has not got down on the inside of you. That's why. Wow. Okay. See, that's why you was easily offended. Oh, yeah. Because the word did never take root. See, because if the word took root, then you know they're not doing it to me, they're doing it to God. How you get church hurt? Because they didn't let you have your way. So you do a spiritual to temper temper tantrum. Every time I turn around, somebody got a temper check. I said, do not invite me. Because you would not like me. <laughs> I ain't call my name with them. So you only did it for your name to be called? Do you know God looking at the heart? All right, all right, all right. come on. Mm. Amen. My season is up. You ain't even had a season yet. Hallelujah. Come on, preacher. Because you're supposed to be a seed that falls to the ground and die. You ain't even dead yet. It's still all about you. That's right. All right, come on. I'm chatter. Because your righteousness. Mm. All right, I only got two more to give y'all. Y'all, y'all still, y'all still with me, y'all? Yes, we, we still good. Yes, good. Just, 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 just say, Apostle, we good. Apostle, we good. Okay, so I'll give you one there. <laughs> so, so what's it? So, so, so the problem is we, we want to use the word church hurt because of our righteousness. Mm -hmm. right, right. Can you imagine Jesus? Jesus said that. I'm church hurt, so I ain't going to the cross. Because you got to remember, it was the church that put the head out on me. So can you imagine Jesus said, I'm, not, I'm church hurt, I'm not going. I opened up blinded eyes, I fed 5,000, I cleaned lesper, leprosy, so I'm not going, I'm church hurt. But Jesus knew it wasn't about him. It was about his assignment. And if you really understood it, was not about you, it's about your assignment. There we go. Oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. All right, let me, let me finish this. Proverbs 16. He said, I'm going to send a strong delusion. I'm going I'm to I'm let you stay in that condition. And y'all, we know we have watched our loved ones uh, 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 pass away. And in the process of passing away, we heard some people say some great things about them, but we say, 
God. Mm. Let me finish it. That he may give an account yes. about you. Yes. And you fight it against the person that got to give an account for you. Mm. Oh. oh my God. Oh. That's good. Because you got a righteousness. Now he got to give it account for you. Let me finish it. That he don't give it grudgingly. Because it profits you nothing. Amen. And we go out and do our own thing. Don't, don't, don't submit to leadership because we have our own righteousness. We move like moonlight. Uh, 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 what's the other word? What they used to call for moonlighting? When you sneak in, you know, you have one job and told you you ain't not allowed to work another job, so you sneak and go do something now. You ain't getting their permission, so you go sneak and do something. That's what we do. We sneak and have ministries. My Lord. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Ouch. Before you tell me we're going to have a Bible class, I'm going to ask you, did Pastor say we can have it? Mm -hmm. Why well, I got to ask Pastor? Because God has order. Because if you don't get permission, then what you're doing is you're releasing the spirit of rebellion. So everybody that's in your so-called Bible study is getting that spirit off of you. So you're releasing rebellion. That's why you come in acting crazy sometimes. <laughs> My God. Every church in church. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And then sometimes we fight against the church because of our righteousness. We, we, when new people come in, we don't want them in because of our righteousness. We don't like the way they look. They're trying to be faithful to the pastor, so we're going to get rid of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep going, man. Keep going. But that's our righteousness, right? That's our righteousness. Now, you know, uh, in Proverbs... Uh, 14 and 12 says the same thing. There's a way that seems right. Mm -hmm. And it looks strange to you. And you look okay to you. But the end is death. Mm -hmm. So watch this. A sinner is not trying to have the form of godliness. Mm -hmm. A sinner it doesn't have the zeal of God. It ain't even trying to... So, so who is he talking to? Us. He's talking to us. He's trying to warn us to straighten up. Last scripture. And that's in Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew 7, it says this. Well, I'm going to do 13 and 14, then I'm going to go down to my last one. So 13 says it this way. Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and through there be that finds it. <laughs> Amen. Why is the road that many of us, the so-called believers, so-called people that love God, so-called people that says they on God's side, find the wide road that leads to destruction? Only a few of us. Now, 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 now I'm gonna say this to y'all, like I said to them yesterday. Have you ever paid attention to the map that Jesus was giving us illustration? So in this room, if we do the math, only 50% of us going to make it. Let me give you an illustration. Jesus said there was two in the field. How many got taken away? 50%. Two in the house top. How many got taken? 50%. Ten virgins. How many made it? Oh, five out of the oh, ten. Yeah, yeah, five. five out of the ten made it. 50%. The five foolish thought they was, they was doing it their way. And when time came, it was too late for them. 
They banging on the door, let me in. He's letting us know. He's like, look, look at the numbers. Everybody ain't gonna make it because why? We haven't surrendered. We haven't submitted ourselves. We on that wide road doing our own thing, coming up with our own way, and then say, God know my heart. Come on. God understand me. He sure do. He definitely do. <laughs> so watch this. Let's close this out. Let's go to verse 21. Same Matthew 7, 21. Verse 21. <clears throat> Not everyone who says to me, I'm, not, I'm in the Amplified Version now. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now see, he, he didn't say he that go to church. <laughs> he said he that does, what's the will of God? To advance the kingdom of God. You can't act like a Christian and claim to be a citizen. See, I just threw a real loophole on y'all now. Because all y'all Christians, you can cuss because you're a Christian. Uh-oh. You can love some and hate some because you're a Christian. You can forgive some because you're a Christian. You can act any kind of way because you're a Christian. As a citizen, this is a lifestyle for us. We have to live this life every day. That's why I tell people, what you see is what you get. What you see in the pulpit is what you see at my office when I'm handling business. What you see is what you see at the grocery store. What you see is what you see at the restaurant. I get on everybody's nerves. I make everybody smile. I try to help everybody. When I leave the table, they know a Christian wasn't at the restaurant, but a, a citizen of the kingdom was. Mm -hmm. The way I tell. Hello, somebody. Amen. Mm -hmm. They're like, you're a Christian? No, I'm not. They were like, how you going to say that? You ain't a, you're supposed to be a Christian. I said, no, I'm not a Christian. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I say what my king says. Whether it hurt your feelings or not. Mm -hmm. My king ain't never spared anybody feelings. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. My God. Matter of fact, you want me to talk like you? You generation of vipers. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're yeah. spitting out poison on folks. <laughs> Trying to sell everything in the church. Right. <laughs> he didn't know. He ain't, he ain't had time for it. See, because the only person getting mad is religious folks. That's right. Sinners love you if you're going to walk like Christ. Because you're bringing them out of what they in. And they want to come out. They just needed a light. But when you're looking like a strong light, they don't know if you're... If, right. oh, mm -hmm. oh my God. They don't know what you are. And when you're a strong light, you bipolar schizophrenic. One minute you want to be saved, the next minute I'm going to be human. The next minute you want to be saved, the next minute I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. The next minute you want to be... That's how we act. Even our family don't know if you're saved or not. Okay. Your own family question your salvation. Because what? One minute they see you loving, the next minute they see you hateful. You claim to be anointed, but you won't pray over your own family member that's on drugs. Because that demon know you ain't got no power. That demon say, I wish you would come over here. You don't even let them in your house. No, don't come. I love a Jehovah's Witness, not on my daughter. Like, come on in. Let's talk. They pull out their Bibles. Hold on, let me go get mine. Then they share something, and then I'll be like, oh, that ain't what it says. This is what it says. And then they'd be like, X on his door. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then going back there. We'll let him, he'll let us in, but. <laughs> they told me one day, we're going to go get some elders. Go get them. Y'all, come on back. God told me to love everybody. Come on. And when you talk, I'm going to talk. So he said, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, but watch this. He says, many will say to me on that day, many Baptists and Church of God in Christ and Catholics and Lutheran, Presbyterians and non denomination many of us is going to say to him on that day, my Lord, 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 have we not prophesied in your name and driving out demons in your name? And done many mighty works in your name. Ain't no sinner call himself casting out a demon. 
Ain't no sinners out there trying to do works in his name. Only us. Right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. Then and then I, this is Christ, will say to them openly and publicly, I never knew you. You've been in church 20 some years and God don't say, I ain't even know you. That's why, the, that's why most churches are hollering, the devil in the house. Yeah, the devil in the house because you didn't even know. You thought they were saved. And you gave them positions. Devil in the choir. You gave the devil your choir. If you had some anointing, the devil wouldn't be in your house. But he says, I'm going to openly say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Let me finish it. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commandments. He says, listen, go. You, you, you didn't pay attention to nothing I said. You didn't love when I told you to love. You didn't help nobody when I told you to help. You disregarded all my commandments. He says, so just, just come. Depart. Depart to what? The lake of fire. That's where you're headed. Hell is just your holding place until that final judgment. To the lake of fire. We're making reservation for hell in church. Because of our righteousness. We're sitting in church making reservation for hell. And we're singing a song. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, just get right, church. Get right, church, and let's go home. And on our way to hell. I'm going home on the morning train. Really? That's what, because we sing those songs, but our heart is not right. When we say, love somebody before you leave, you leave them, you leave without hugging three people because you don't like them. <laughs> but you claim to be in the righteousness of God. Okay, I know. Let me, let, me, let me just close this up right now. Because I know we don't really want this. But let me tell y'all something. When I was in my prayer room and God gave me this message, I sat there and I wept. And the reason I wept was because he showed me me when I was in my righteousness and I said it was nothing but your grace that allowed me to come out of my righteousness see he, he allowed me to see me and it was nothing but God that allowed me an opportunity to come out of my righteousness into his Righteous. I could have died and had a funeral out of all the people I helped in the city get jobs and go to jails and all the stuff didn't mean nothing when I was in my own righteousness. God would have said, depart from me. God would have said, that's it. I tried. But since you wouldn't listen, I'm going to send you to lose it. I'm going to let you stay right there and so that at the end, you can go. Because I tried to give you an opportunity. Right? Now, the last thing I want to do, if it's okay with Bishop, can I do this last thing? Because I always have to ask for permission. I'll just love to do some things. If you know from your heart that you've been based in your own righteousness and you want to get that right with God today I'm going to ask you to stand up if you know you've been in your own righteousness and you know that you ain't been lined up with God 
I want you to stand today. We, gonna, we, we, we need to get this right with God that we're not one that he says. That he says, <clears throat> depart from me. And those of you that's on Facebook, that's watching from Facebook, if you know it was you, and here's the thing, if you don't know the righteousness of God, the Bible says, he that lacks wisdom, ask God. Lord, show me the areas of my life where I missed the mark. I know what I was taught in church, but if I miss the mark, show me that I can get it right with you. Father, we stand in here asking for forgiveness. Forgive us for living in our own righteousness, our own opinions, our own way of doing and being right. Today we submit to your righteousness. Yes, Lord. Father, we never had your righteousness. So we want you to teach us how to live in your righteousness, God. We had Baptist righteousness. We had Church of God in Christ righteousness. We had Lutheran righteousness. We had every religious righteousness, God. But today we want yours. We want to love like you. We want to forgive like you. We want to show mercy like you. We want to have patience like you. And we want to speak like you, God. Have your way in our lives today, God. Thank you for not destroying us before we had this time to repent. Thank you for your tender mercy. We do not take it for granted. Knowing that we could have been destroyed. Knowing that we could have opened our eyes in hell from church. We ask you to forgive us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God a praise.